we jump into the glorious chapter of Revelation chapter 5 now. Now, we looked at chapter 4 last in the last video, but chapters 4 and 5 are essentially one unit. Chapter 4 started with a door standing open in heaven, and the voice of Jesus calls him, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. 4 verse 2 says that at once I was in the Spirit. Now, that is a phrase that we see four times in Revelation, giving us four big units in the book of Revelation. And here, it opens a very big unit from chapter 4 verse 1 all the way to chapter 16. It is just one big unit. And chapters 4 and 5 set us up for what we'll see in uh, the rest of this big unit, where we see history playing out in these last days and God's judgment rolling out on humanity, while we also see the redemption and the protection of those who have been saved by the Lamb. I called the sermon I preached on this section, Who is Worthy? As always, before I go through the text with you, I encourage you to take some time to read this passage for yourself and just look out for key repetition, and there's a lot of it in this chapter, and note down any key questions that you might have from the text, and as always, I'm just going to show you what I've seen in the passage. Also, take some time to pray. Ask God to help you to understand his word to you. This is an incredible truth that we need to understand if we hope to make it to the glorious end, victorious. And an important thing that we see in this passage is that if you hope to be victorious, it all hinges on the Lamb. Now this Lamb, as we'll see as we go through the text, is also the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, but he's consistently then called in the rest of the chapter, the Lamb. So chapter 4 focused in on him who sits on the throne. Uh, as we saw in chapter 4, he is the Lord God Almighty. Just as in chapter 4, uh, the throne was central in the whole scene. And here we see that uh, the throne and him who sits on the throne, and particularly the lamb on the throne, is in focus. Also just showing that chapters 4 and 5 are a unit uh, we see uh, the elder we met in chapter 4, the 24 elders, and they are still here in this chapter. And just to remember these 24 elders, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles, so the Old Testament and the New Testament redeemed people of God. And we also see the four living creatures who we met. Uh, these were the spiritual representatives of all of creation, all the, cre the whole created order, the created species. And remember the important context for them um, is Ezekiel chapter 1. We can go and read just that uh, helpful showing us they are uh, the, the cherubim, the heavenly beings of Ezekiel 1. Um, they also are symbolic, or they look like the seraphim of Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, they are the spiritual representatives in heaven of the whole created order. And these 24 elders are the spiritual heavenly representatives of the redeemed people of God. And we saw them in chapter 4, bowing down in worship before God, who is sovereignly ruling the creator God. But the difference in this chapter is the one who is in view is the lamb, and it is the lamb who was slain. Looking as if he had been slain. And so what we see in this chapter is the redemption of God's people. Uh, you purchased for God. So that word is uh, purchased or ransomed. So the focus here is on the Lamb's work to redeem a people for himself. So the song that we see here is the song of the redeemed. 
But as this scene starts, we sh shift from the end of chapter four, this big focus on him who sits on the throne, and we focus in on a scroll that is in his right hand, a scroll with writing on both sides of it. And we see this scroll becomes very prominent in the first half of this chapter. And the big, the big question that the chapter begins with is, uh, who is worthy? Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Now, what exactly is this scroll? Again, Old Testament context is so important. And we're taken back to the book of Ezekiel, and this time chapter 2. And if you go and read in Ezekiel chapter 2, we see uh, this scroll um, has been seen again, has been seen before, a scroll with writing on both sides. This, in Ezekiel 2, that scroll is opened for Ezekiel, and we see that it contains God's judgment. And here in Revelation 5, again, it is the scroll outlining God's judgment. And by the time we get to chapter 6, um, going all the way through to 16, we'll see that judgment rolling out. And terrifyingly, we'll see that it is the, the, the lamb who is executing God's judgment. And chapter 6 speaks about the wrath of the lamb. The, the people who are facing that judgment call for the mountains to fall on them so that they can be protected from the wrath of the lamb. But before we see the wrath of the lamb, we first have a look at the triumph of the lamb. And it's very important for us to get this order right. This word triumph is that big word that we see in Revelation that's translated as uh, the one who conquered. So in the letters or the one who is victorious. Each of the letters in chapters 2 and 3 a call for uh, the redeemed people to be counted among those who are victorious at the end. But here we see that, see the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. He is the victorious one. He has triumphed. He has conquered. And because he's done that, he's able to open the scroll and its seals. As we saw in chapter 4, this is actually the word behold. So chapter 4 wanted us to behold him who sits on the throne and worship him who sits on the throne. But now it's behold the lion. And he turns and surprisingly in the story, instead of seeing uh, a strong lion, he sees a lamb looking as if it had been slain. But it may look as if it's been slain, but this lamb is standing. He is standing in triumph, he is the one who's conquered, he is victorious, standing in the center of the throne. And we see that he has seven horns, which are symbolic of having all the power. And he has seven eyes, which are symbolic of having um, all knowledge, all spiritual knowledge. So although this lamb looks as if he's been slain, He's standing in the center of the throne, where him who sits on the throne is. He's in the place of God because he is the Lord God, God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. He is the one who the whole Old Testament has been longing for. And this concept of um, a lamb is a rich Old Testament context. And you can go and read the, the Passover story in the book of Exodus. Or you can go and read um, Isaiah 53, the suffering servant who is spoken of as the suffering uh, lamb, the lamb to the slaughter. And then in the New Testament, in the same writer, John, who wrote Revelation in his gospel, in John 1 verse 29, we hear John the Baptist points to Jesus and says, Behold! the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So this Lamb who had been slain stands in triumph at the center of the throne because he is at the center of all history. Uh, the victorious Lamb is the hinge of history. The events of history hinge on this Lamb and his triumph which happened on the cross where he was slain. Chapter 4, we heard this call of worthy 
to the one seated on the throne because he created all things and by his will they were created and have their being. But here we hear a new song. And again, it's the four living creatures and the 24 elders, those same representatives in the heavenly places singing worship, but they are singing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll. You, you lamb who is slain, are worthy to take the scroll from the hand of God and open its seals because, because you were slain. It is the death of Jesus that shows without a shadow of a doubt that he is the one with the power and the authority to open the scroll, which as we're going to see in chapters uh, 6 to 16, he's going to execute God's judgment. But before we see that judgment exercised, we need to have this truth of redemption in, in mind. This lamb was slain to take that judgment of God on himself so that those who trust in him can be redeemed. It is the most glorious news. It is the news of the gospel. It's growing the picture that we saw of Jesus in chapter 1 where we heard the glorified uh, Jesus saying, do not be afraid. Why don't we need to be afraid? Well, because he was slain. He took that judgment that should be so terrifying, he took it upon himself so that we can be counted among the blood-bought people of God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Again, we've seen that um, in chapter 1, that language was used already, and he's made them to be a kingdom and priests already, an uh, idea we've seen in chapter 1, and they will reign on the earth. And so this whole opening section, like in chapter 4, we were to behold him who sits on the throne. Here we are to behold the lion, behold the lamb. And chapter, uh, verse 11 onwards, shows us the proper response to the lamb. We are to respond to the lamb in worship. Because he is worthy. Worship him. Because he is worthy. This idea of worthiness is asked, who is worthy? Who is worthy? No one was found who is worthy, but he's worthy. Because he was slain and he redeemed a people for God. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. It's a, a sevenfold praise to God here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In Revelation, complete praise. But then verse 13 brings the pictures of chapter 4 and 5 together because now we see him who sits on the throne and the Lamb. And every creature in heaven and earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them is singing praise to him on the throne and the Lamb. The Lamb changes everything. The lamb is the hinge point of all history, and it's the lamb who deserves all praise. One day he will be praised by everyone, as Philippians 2 verse 11 tells us. And here we see a picture of every creature, everyone, absolutely everyone, singing praise to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And as the four living creatures, these heavenly representatives of the created species, say amen, those who have been redeemed, the Old Testament and New Testament representatives of the redeemed people, those who have been purchased by his blood, they fall down and worship. That is the right response to the Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain. And if you want to behold the Lion, you need to behold the Lamb. This symbol who is the hinge point of all history the seemingly weak lamb who is slain is actually the all-powerful, all-knowing lion of Judah who has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll, execute judgment, but at the same time he is able to redeem people from that judgment because with his blood he took that judgment on himself 
so that people could be redeemed and made into a kingdom and priests to serve God, and we will reign on the earth forever. It is an absolutely glorious picture that we are given here. And if you hope to be victorious, it all hinges on the Lamb. And so as you dig in further, I hope that this will just grow your wonder at who Jesus is and what he's done. As you teach this to others, let's have a big view of Jesus. Uh, the Jesus, the glorified Jesus we saw in chapter 1, that picture is just grown and enhanced here in chapter 5. And for those who have been purchased, we don't need to fear the judgment that is about to be unrolled in chapter 6 and onwards. And so in thankful praise, we should sing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and we should fall down and worship Him. Well, God bless as you dig into this glorious chapter further and as you teach it to others.